Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 9 uh, 10 a.m. Um, today being the uh, 11th of October. Present is uh, Paul Kearse, Wayne Sawchuk, uh, Carol Rowe, also uh, Dan Coughlin and uh, Sharin uh, Everett, our attorney, and uh, Brian Joyce. And I'm looking to see what, I don't have the agenda up in front of me. Let me just uh, call it up. Uh, Paul? Yes. And what will be the next meeting date? So the next meeting date would, would be the uh, 25th at 9 a.m. Okay. Is that good for you, Wayne? Yes, it is. Okay. And <clears throat> so, Carol, did you send an agenda? Because I have the the outlook up, but I don't see an agenda on it. Uh, I did. Okay. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is a coastal Re uh, resilience grant. Laura Lind was to go, going to discuss the details. Okay, yeah, if you want to promote Lauren. I'm here. <laughs> Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for having me. I'm Lauren Lind. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm the town's planning and zoning director. I'm right here to talk to you today. We recently were the recipients of a coastal zone management award for um, a climate flood modeling study of the, it, really looks at the focus area, if you think about Classic Harbor in by the Cove, and then in through James Brook watershed area, which runs through up, you know, <clears throat> behind Elm Street, really, where the, the sewer treatment plant is. And then under the village, it goes underground, and, and we all know sort of how that ties in. So the idea behind the grant really is as we think about, uh, you know, climate change and increased precipitation events, increased flooding, there's all sorts of like risks and between the two integration of the coastal flood hazards as well as the inland flooding hazard this will really take a look at what could potentially happen in the future build out modeling scenarios for different different risk and assess percentage chance what you could also do uh, identification of mitigation hazards and strategies so at the end in addition to all this data collection that we will have and identification of hazards and recommendations will be opportunities and infrastructure like solutions to some of these problems with particular focus on the wastewater treatment plant. So we are partnering with uh, Woods Hole Group, which is a um, scientific consulting group. They're based uh, down in the Cape. They've done a lot of really great work with coastal communities on the Cape and also some of our neighboring uh, communities along the South Shore. So they have partnered with us to do this work. They're going to be really the lead on the, the data collection and the, the flood model build out. And what we'll be doing is over the next couple of months, the grant program runs, you have to have the completion of this portion of the, the grant program done by the end of next uh, fiscal year. So over the next several months, we'll hold a series of public engagement sort of meetings. We'll start internally with stakeholders, which we would, of course, look to include um, a representative of the Sewer Commission. We, of course, have Brian Joyce on the team. But if there's a member of the commission, that also would like to participate in meetings, we'd love to have you and we'll look with the group to collect information. They'll come back to us throughout the process to report back on findings. And ultimately there'll be some public series of meetings that will introduce this to the larger public and sort of explain what we've been looking at and what this means and what we could do in the future. Um, the last thing I'll say is that I think this is the first award that this town has had with the, this particular coastal zone management program. And what was really hopeful uh, for me hearing, particularly from the program and the award ceremony this year was that they really like to see evolution of projects to, to take a project from data collection through you know, permitting design and, and build out of a project. So I think that this is a, hopefully a really good opportunity for us to do some real meaningful resiliency work for this area. So with that, I'll stop and I'll turn it over to all of you to see what questions you might have. I don't have any at this point. Wayne, any questions for you? Well, Lauren, how much, um, can you tell me how much the grant amount is in, and how we've, um, how you feel it, you can get through it with that, with the amount that you have? 
Absolutely. So we worked really closely with Woods Hole Group building this. So it was a very tangible built on what they were analyzing would take them to build these models out their hours. And then um, also working collectively with the town staff that are going to be involved on what we could do for a, a dollar match for the grant. Um, we were ultimately awarded based on the budget that was built out uh, roughly $161,000 for this portion of the grant program. Um, and then in addition, what the town had done in anticipation of announcement of this grant award was we had preloaded through some of our um, American uh, Rescue Plan Act funding. The town had preloaded, uh, I'm forgetting the exact dollar amount, I wanna say it was about $45,000 to do some of the data collection, knowing that whether or not we were to receive the grant award, that that would be valuable information for us to move forward as a logical part of this process. So um, all in all, we've we've got a, a good chunk of funds that are going towards this and will make meaningful contribution. And like I said, um, Nasser Brahim is the lead uh, climate resiliency specialist on our project. He was our primary point of contact when crafting this entire scope. Um, so I feel confident that we've got enough funds to, to deliver what has been said in the scope of work. Yeah, is, it, is any part of this uh, have any regional aspect to it? I, or was it just specific to um, the town of Cohasset? Is it uh, gonna encompass any other abutters? So no, this specific project is looking at solely Cohasset, Harbor Cove, Jamesbrook watershed area. It really is okay. to us. With that said, I'm sure it will incorporate regional, you know, flood and precipitation data so that they can incorporate those projections. Um, you know, they're going to be looking at history of, you know, sea level rise, flooding events, hurricanes, all sorts of these sort of precipitous events as well um, on a regional basis to, to project future scenarios. Okay, yeah, because half that harbor is situated over there. So uh, right. I assume it's going to be, I don't know if they're going to have input on it or if they're going to participate in it. So I was just curious because I know they're, they're planting oyster bed farms and all kinds of other stuff over there. So Right. This um, we haven't involved uh, situate with this grant because, like I said, this really is a little bit more focused on the Cove and James Brook okay. intertidal connection there. Okay. Awesome. So we'll be ready when you are. Well, Great. I think there are some you know definite opportunities for us to um, get some information, even you know raise some money on our own if 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 someone looks at um, situations, and I think like. Our, our manholes, they're not all watertight. And so if they're around the harbor and, and we have just a, you know, a reasonable high tide, they can be covered with water and then the water's gonna get into our system. And then we're, we're trying to treat salt water along with, with fresh water and the capacity start, you know, getting up there and, and the capacity gets down and the, and the, the flows go up um, that they're, I'm really looking forward to seeing if there's things that we can do um, to alleviate. I mean, if, if the sewer plant got inundated with water and and just flooded everything, we would be in serious trouble. And and I'd like to do something to sort of mitigate that. So those are my my thoughts. Absolutely. And that is exactly the thinking behind this sort of a program and the solutions that they would present for these scenarios. So. This is, um, like I said, a really exciting opportunity, and I'm, I'm sure I'll be in touch shortly as we start to plan these engagement meetings. So if you have no further questions for me, I'm going to head out, but thank you all so much for having me. And, um, and Paul, I'll see you later. We have, we have another committee meeting. I know. On, so. Thank I you will. all. All right, great, thank you. Hey, Carol, what's next up on the agenda? Uh, next up on the agenda is a Cook Estate update and review. Okay. So I don't know if uh, anyone here is on from Cook, but- um... I'm promoting them right now. Oh, okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hi, Paul. This is Tom Flannery. Um, hey, Tom. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, and hello to everybody. Um, no, no real update from uh, our standpoint here. There's, there's been no, you know, additional work that's been done in the past uh, two weeks. We're still waiting on that pump, which um, 
I believe um, is still scheduled for the first week in November. So we're working towards that. Um, and um, so that, I really have nothing more than that. Um, we, uh, we still have not received the uh, uh, sewer connection agreement, uh, red line draft that was uh, discussed, I think, uh, at the last meeting and the meeting before that. So I had reached out to Bill the other day just to let him know that we hadn't received it, if we should be um, expecting that soon. He said that it would probably be brought up uh, today, but he said he would not be present. So that's okay. about all I know on that. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and that that's uh, <clears throat> consistent where I believe we are as well. So I know uh, Bill had sent out an email to um, uh, Wayne and myself, um, and I did, I did uh, speak with uh, Bill last week on the contract. Um, we were waiting to hear back from Dan Coughlin, which he had sent us his um, edits to the contract. Um, so I think that uh, it's a matter of us uh, compiling what he has there. Is that where we are, Sharin? Uh, yes, uh, so I made all the changes that Dan sent. I have a that few Dan questions. Sent. I have a few questions, uh, a few questions left, okay. and then I can ship off the changes to you for final review. Okay, terrific. Um, Wayne, do you have any uh, uh, questions or comments on that? No, just waiting for the the for draft the final draft. Okay, yeah, sorry about that, Tom. We um, we had Sharin's edits, but we didn't have Dan's, uh, so we finally got Dan's edits, and now we can compile them together. Okay, and then um, and then go from there. Okay, so we can expect that then maybe this week? I think so. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. And um, so, so Dan, are you happy with where you are with that? I know it, it seemed like you took a lot of stuff out of there and um, I just wanted to uh, review it once uh, I get it back and go over it with Bill again. I, I just wanted to confirm that, you know, a lot of what's required um for the testing for the entire system was uh put in there so uh, i know you took quite a bit of it out yeah i mean a lot of it really isn't required for this this type of installation no grease traps that type of thing but um you know i just still have some questions and i think those are probably what sharin's gonna look for clarification on okay. too once um you know once i receive it back i'll take another look but um you know generally those were my comments so Okay, yeah, just I, I just assume we're doing similar testing to, you know, like, uh, you know, mandrel and uh, pressure CCTV testing, any of that? Yeah. Pressure pressure testing would be done, mandrel yeah. testing would not. That's just for uh, gravity sewers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to um, make sure some of those provisions in there is just things were getting a little thin. And I know uh, we had been waiting on your your final draft of the revised uh, rules and regulations for the sewer. Uh, we thought we were going to get that back in August from you and I haven't seen it yet. So I uh, yeah. wasn't sure if some of those provisions, uh, I don't know if those provisions are in here or not. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just pretty much the standard ones that we had before when we, okay. um, when we did the last sewer expansion in Little Harbor, you know. Okay. We're still using those same ones and um the rules and regs actually uh, are, are pretty much done so okay. i got to do one more review which i didn't get to this weekend okay but, um, they can get to it this week and then we should be able to ship that out to you and we also have to um the uh, solicitation for the um, outfall diving and video inspection okay which, um, we want to try to get out this fall just as the clarity you know, starts cleaning up a little okay so i just want to make sure that the the new draft of the rules and regulations uh, come out because we, you know, we were hoping it was in place prior to uh, Cook starting, but um, uh, they're kind of well on their way. I think they're just waiting for the pump in November, um, but at least uh, we can get that in place for anything new, like the Harbor project that's going on at One Pleasant. We really want to get that in place. But um, you're confident that uh, what's in place in that draft agreement, along with our existing rules and regulations, you have implemented what applies to the Cook Estate in that trap. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then, okay. like I said, there were a couple of questions that really might be with one of the board members. So Sharin may, may need to have okay. a point of contact just to get some clarification there. I don't know if you want to, anybody wants to volunteer, one of you guys to just to 
coordinate that in. Okay. So we don't have to do it for another meeting, but. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, once we get it out, uh, I think Lane and I can pretty much opine fairly quick on it. Yeah, I, I was going to the revisions today. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions on Cook? Any comments? Okay, Carol, we'll move on to... Uh, uh, CJC update. CJC. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you. Does Dan have comments? Yeah, uh, Jeff Delise is on. I don't know. Um, I'm looking to see if she's promoting anyone from CJC. Well, you uh, you did receive my uh, recommendations for 390. Um, for the most part, all the testing has been performed there. The only thing we're waiting on is basically one of the requirements of the agreement as well as the design plans. And that was basically how that flow meter will record peak flows from the ins installation. It's not important right now, but when all three pumping stations are in place, uh, it would be good information to know what the peak flows are. Obviously, um, you know, any dual pump activations at the facility are an indicator of, a, of an issue. Um, so with that peak flow um, estimate, um, we'll uh, be able to see, um, you know, what limitations we have with the system. And that, that's something that doesn't get put in place, I believe, until all three buildings are hooked up, right? Well, it should be in place with each one, um, but um, they, I'm not sure if they incorporated it in, in accordance with the plans or the agreement. So they're investigating that now, and we're still waiting on um, uh, information from Mark Negrati on how that's gonna be resolved. Okay. But, um, but Don Stasco did, was nice enough to send me a, a brief email indicating that, you know, it's not forgotten about and they will address it. Okay. Jeff, any updates on your side? No, no, not at all. I think, uh, I think Dan and, and our team have been working hard and diligent together and, and, uh, there's really nothing new from our end. Okay. So things passed, they turned the water on uh, for 390. Um, so they're able to start testing what the uh, town uh, building inspector needs to test. And uh, that, yeah, my understanding is they've, uh, they're in the process of requesting the ability to do that and okay. go through that process. Yep. And the other work still continuing for the other two services. Um, there'll be some pressure testing of the main later on this week. Um, weather permitting and, and you know I would suspect that the rest of these services should be complete within 30 to 60. Okay so I did wrap it up. Yeah I did make a recommendation by email there that we approve the testing and make sure that we're not you know we don't have to have a meeting when they're ready to do the testing and then have it just be delayed. So um, I'd like to you know, sort of keep that there uh, yeah. as a point. So, yeah, yeah. So he can, uh, they can keep continue on as long as they pass the test. They can move to the next step. Is how we voted. So yeah, we're, we're still obviously waiting on other materials as well. You know, the asphalt plans. There's an O and N manual um, information on the flow meter, um, and you know, uh, Negrati was supposed to put a package together for each one of the addresses. Uh, you know, so 390, there would be a package of information, um, 380, 400, and, and that way, basically, you can almost close out each service as we as we progress. So. Okay. I know we were looking for a timeline from him, too. Uh, I know Pam wanted to know just when, you know, when she needs to get involved um, from her side of the town um, as well. So I know they were waiting on I don't know, pumps or something else to come in. So yeah, yeah. The the estimated time I think to receive the pumps is um I want to say I was told, don't hold me to it, but I think it was November 15th. Okay. So uh and they um I know are going to be to go and Pam, they're gonna want to try and turn that around because um they have they have time pressures, for instance, with that the asphalt plant and so forth. So they're going to want to they're going to want to get moving as fast as they can on the um, installation of that, and then immediately the uh, the removing from uh, removing the septic system. I, I forget what we call it decommissioning, maybe. 
Like, yeah, that, they're, they, yeah, they're going to try and yeah, they're going to try and do that fairly quickly after they receive it. I know that. Okay, thank All you. Like yeah, I think the, the only real concern we had with um, the yeah, reuse and some of the grease tanks, so we just need to get those inspections cleared up as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be sending those to PAM as well when we receive the uh, certifications. So, uh, Brian, any questions or comments on your side? <laughs> Uh, no, we're good. Uh, water was turned on, I think, Friday. We went back and forth. And uh, so they're, they're doing their testing, I believe, on the, the uh, domestic water plumbing on, inside the building and uh, moving forward. Okay. Brian, while we have you, um, they sent the, um, the CAD versions for the uh, Route 3A. Were those okay from your end? Um, I'll have to take a look at them. I don't think I received... Uh, yeah, we, did you get that in an email? Uh, I did, and I forwarded it over to you. So, yeah, if you could re-forward that. Uh, I don't know if it's maybe my CAD uh, license, but uh, I, haven't, I haven't been able – I haven't opened anything up at any rate. Okay. If you could re-forward it, it'll be at the top of my email list. Okay. That was the only remaining item, I think, for the Route 3A work, um, was just to make sure that the town had a, a workable CAD file for it. Um, yeah, so it, it, yeah, I'll, I'll try to open them up, and if uh, if I can't, I'll let the group know. Yeah, they can always save them down and send them to you too if that works. I mean, it, it would be handy to have the CAD and uh, you know obviously <clears throat> PDF that we can append to our GIS, similar to our other as builds. Is there anything you might need if we uh, start moving forward with, uh, I believe 380 will be the next one hooked up and then uh, the stop and shop 400 will be the last one, I think in December. <clears throat> no, I mean, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, we're ready to go. Uh, the, the sewer is good to go. I, I, I'll defer to Pam on kind of what she needs for uh, inspections or, or maybe abandoning the old systems. I know you have to break the top of the chamber and fill it with sand or break the bottom of the chamber. So um, that's a board of health uh, piece. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Terrific. Anyone else, any comments before we move on? All right. Carol, what's on number four? Uh, One Pleasant Street. Uh, One Pleasant Street. I believe we have a gentleman here for One Pleasant Street. Yeah. Hi, Jeff Delisi. Um, <laughs> So I have all the data that uh, that would serve as the basis for a letter which was requested from the commission um, uh, that kind of outlines the flows, et cetera. And as I was preparing the letter, I, I uh, wanted to tie it back to the, uh, the regulations. So I went back to the sewer regulations and um, I kind of ran into some confusion as to what, from a legal standpoint, what is likely to be an assessment before any discount. And um, as I was reviewing the regulations, I was in particular looking at section Roman numeral 10, and uh, I kind of ran into a question in my mind as to whether, whether, what kind of fee are we talking about here? Because um, in the regulation itself, what at least what I saw, and I know the, the commission is more familiar with its regulations than I am, which is why I'm asking the question. I feel I need an answer to the question before I write my letter. Um, and, and that really is, what, what I saw was that sewer betterments are to be um, assessed upon the installation of a new sewer service. Um, and in this particular case, uh, sewer betterments uh, were assessed decades ago and paid off. And so um, the next so, so the next thing I saw in, in, in the regulations, also section Roman numeral 10, uh, was that sewer user charges are to be collected, um, I believe, on a quarterly basis, <laughs> I thought it said. And, um, and those obviously are the, the water charges. And so 
kind of as I was putting it together in my mind, I'm saying, all right, well, you charge for sewer betterment uh, when a, a sewer line is brought to the property. And the concept behind that is that it's to reimburse the town for its cost of putting the line in. And then uh, you, 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 char you, you do sewer charges moving forward based on consumption and the, that money is to be collected all throughout town and used to maintain and repair and mod, you know the system. And so I'm just looking, I, I, I'm asking the board if the board can give me um, kind of something to look at in its regulation. And I'm sure it's there. I'm probably just missing it. Uh, that would indicate that that um, how to how to what's the basis for collection of additional fees uh, in the form of EDUs, which are generally um, betterment assessments in, in this particular circumstance. I didn't see it. And if you can point me to that portion of, of the regulation that I must be overlooking, then I'll have everything I need and and I can get, you know, I've already half drafted my letter as, as to what the plans were before um, we demolished the building and what the plans are now. Um, so I know we kind of went through this ourselves uh, about a month or so ago. Um, there is a, um, there is a change of use application um, that did kind of speak to that, but I, I don't, currently have that in my file, my electronic file, um, to where you went from getting approved for uh, whatever the property was at the time, two or four EDUs. Now, uh, you're up much higher than that, but though the line um, currently exists, you're adding 14 units, uh, uh, residential dwelling units there versus uh, the two to four uh, EDUs that were, or I'm sorry, it was a uh, uh, state of weight. One pleasant, yeah, I'm trying to look to see where we talked about the one EDU or two EDUs that it had. Um, I, I, I thought that- It was two EDUs, no, I'm sorry. It yep. was two? Two, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I, and I know I know that there's a change of uh, use application and, and I saw that in the regulation as well. And what it talked about was, um, you know, you need to file that. And I, and I, and, and, it, and it even had, um, permit um, fees for the for the change of use permit. And my understanding with that is that it, it, it was there to ensure that they're, you know, to, to notify the town mm -hmm. and to ensure that there is uh, adequate sewer flow to, or capacity to accept the flow. So I, I didn't see, and, and again, I could be wrong on this, but I, I'm just looking for some guidance as to where in the regulation we're talking uh, because this is a bit of an anomalous situation where we've had sewer, it's paid off, um, and uh, and there's a, a substantial change in use, obviously, and uh, for an existing building. I just didn't see, or maybe if you can point <laughs> to circumstances where the town has customarily, you know, dealt with a similar situation, I I. It would be helpful for me and I can kind of streamline my correspondence to the board. I think it would be more beneficial. Okay. We can certainly do that. I know uh, Wayne and Dan have got uh, a lot more experience on the side of the house than I do being uh, fairly new to the board. So um, uh, Wayne, I don't know what your thoughts are and Dan. Yeah, yeah you well, need to, I mean, you could, communicate with me out offline that's oh, fine. sure yeah yeah but absolutely I, I don't mean to put anybody on the spot no we um uh, certainly need to take a look at uh what the what the link is uh for an existing building to uh to change and go up in edus and what that cost would be uh, is what we're looking for yeah yeah okay so dan any uh you want to take yeah, a look I mean, the, the, ch the change in use has always been used to basically try to quantify or identify if there will be a flow increase associated with the property. And if there's a flow e increase associated with the property, then there's typically an additional assessment that's placed because it puts an additional burden on the treatment plant. There's also a commercial use policy that you guys approved a couple of years back as well, which is applicable. 
um, you had a residential as well as a commercial policy that you approved. And that actually defines some of the, the current fees that we have in place. So um, I can I can take a peek at that. And uh, Jeff, why don't you just uh, send me a quick email request, and then we'll respond back. Thank you so much. I I do appreciate it. I'm sure I'm mistaken on this, and then we can we can move on. Wayne, any comments? Uh, no, I just think sometimes is a is a. Uh, we have a distinction really between a betterment charge and a and a sort of a uh, convenience type of charge uh, because of the Little Harbor project that um, there, there had to be some value placed on, um, you know, in and like Dan said, indirectly to take care of the additional flows and stuff that are going to the plant that oftentimes you can't, um, you can't say exactly what it's going to be until sometimes it's installed and, you, and, and the, you know, they're getting their quarterly bills and stuff like that but so i think um I'm more than happy to, to work with dan and stuff and and uh, my, you know give my comments and stuff and we can keep it going okay great any other comments okay so we'll we'll take a look at that hopefully jeff we can get back to you uh, uh within the next week or so before that we have definitely before our next meeting on the 25th Okay, and I can turn it around, turn it around on my end fairly quickly. Like I said, I have the information. Um, Dan, I, I'm not at my desk. I'll shoot you an email in, in, in a few hours. Sure. Now, Jeff, could you, um, in, 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 in order to help us a little better, uh, specifically with Dan, is uh, we still had a question on whether your first floor equaled the current facility. So, so what I what I have on that is um, I know what the first floor square footage is, and I know what the uses attributed to the first floor were. All right, so I have that data on the building that was demolished, so that we can compare it to the new building. As far as the new building is concerned, um, we don't yet have our tenants, but we have areas of the building that we know are going to be office tenants an area of the building that is gonna be a retail tenant and an area of the building that's gonna be a restaurant. And, and I think you asked me to um, estimate the number of seats, which, which I've been able to do. And um, I think what I was told was the existing or the pre-existing restaurant was 40 seats and that the uh, new restaurant would be estimated to be somewhere between 30 and 50 seats. Um, it's, it's really a question as to whether they decide to make the restaurant space a little larger, not necessarily increase the seats, but kind of rejigger the walls. And that's something that we're not gonna know until the building permit. But I think that it gives us a, a good understanding as to pretty much where, uh, you know, where it's gonna be. Okay, so Dan, you can kind of, um, you know, give us a, a swag, I guess, on a 30 to 50 uh, restaurant. Yeah, actually, if, if Jeff can just detail that information, because that's what we're really looking for, yeah. it's a little table or something, that'd be the easiest way to, to make sure we're both on the same page. Yeah, because I think the yeah. Title five, Title five, I think the uh, the last calculations we went through um, is specific to number of seats. It's specific to number of seats, and actually there's a distinction on the, on the, uh, the flow, the design flow allotted to tavern seats versus sit, you know, table yep. seats okay um and i can't make that distinction now so i would just assume the worst case scenario i, I would assume a higher flow and that they would all be restaurant seats because i i have no way of knowing yeah with well, that we we'd have to base it on that because we don't know uh you know in future use either you know so it could start out as uh you know 20 tavern seats and then grow into a sit-down restaurant and we wouldn't yeah, but, but alternatively, since we now know that the way we're dealing with this is a change of use form, right? Yeah. Um, what, what you would really do is just assess the residential units at the moment. And then as the building permit applications are filed for the commercial space, then you could, you know, then, then, you know, then you know exactly what it is, right? I mean, right. why speculate and then do it all over again. So, um, 
And I and, and unlike the uh, the project at 390 Chief Justice Cushing Highway, I think that what is likely to happen here is uh, that they probably will get commercial tenants signed up as they're in the process of constructing the building. And before there's even a certificate of occupancy on the residential units, I would expect building permit applications on the first floor to come in. Um, that's, that's, I think, probably a little bit of a distinction as to how the other project rolled out in this one. Okay. But we, we can talk about it. I'll, Dan, I'll provide you all of the data I have, plans and, you know, intentions and all that. Sure. Well, you see, see uh, Wayne as well, just so he's on board. Sure, absolutely. And Jeff, is there any outside seating proposed? Uh, you know, I, I believe that there is. Um, I, I, I recall seeing the um, the architectural plans during the permitting process, and they would have some outdoor kind of cafe seats along Pleasant Street. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. I don't know if that is additional restaurant seats um or if they're just kind of tables where people bring food i have no idea yeah my understanding is that they don't count um as additional seats in the restaurant really oh yeah they don't for for i don't know why but they don't uh, so i guess those people don't go to the bathroom huh yeah well i guess yeah. people think that if it's nice and warm they're going to seat outside and then if yeah. it's cold they're going to go inside but so that if they're outside I don't they're know. not inside yeah you win some you lose some right i guess so yeah all right so i i i i'll provide uh an email that will provoke you guys to give me the data that i'm looking for and then i'll and then i and then when i uh when i receive that i'll hit you with a letter that outlines very specifically what we're what we're doing here okay great thank you so much jeff thank you we appreciate your time today Okay, Carol, uh, next on the agenda. Is just other business? Other business. Uh, I don't know that we had any requests for anything. Um, does anyone have anything else? Is Scott on by any chance or no? No. That's plan. Okay. Because I had a question about um, the manhole that took out and the correct uh, sealing of the, the lateral that is down at the harbor um that i had mentioned before um because the uh, and then uh well, i just didn't know if there's anything happened on that okay brian did you you've got my memo about the fact I that see, the, i don't see brian on here anymore okay all right oh, yeah. dan have you uh have you seen anything on this in terms of i don't know where <laughs> I don't know where the connection is going to be that they're going to use for the project versus what they might have had installed before the demolition. Yeah, I think Brian had sent the uh, Asbel plan, which shows two stubs going out. To yeah, home, right. you know, <clears throat> I don't know which one they are using. Though. I haven't seen anything more from Brian on that since the last correspondence, I think, that he sent you. Okay, but in their application for, I guess, the, the building permit and stuff or something they must have yeah i haven't seen any applications so okay all right because i don't uh because this um so where the manhole didn't have a cover on the, they said they're going to put the cover on the next day instead no. they took the manhole out and they put in crushed mm -hmm. down and they've been hammering mm -hmm. it down for to make a good solid floor for the addition yeah i mean i think i think scott said he was driving out right after our meeting i thought he said he was going to go down there and take a look at it right he did but yeah. the man was there at the time and then the, the, the next day the manhole was ripped out with the excavator and they put in crushed stone and stuff like that okay so my, you know <laughs> did they seal the pipe okay yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. we, have, we did have a policy that basically you know says during construction the temporary capping of these services and the permanent capping of these services uh, from my perspective, this would constitute a change in use too, and there should be an application before the board. I don't know if you've ever received one beyond the building commissioner, you know, getting a uh, a, a request for a permit. I don't and we don't know the building permit would be just for foundation only right now. 
you, you know, so. Yeah. yeah, I thought that's what it was for 87. I didn't hear anything on the other property. Uh, we, we voted specifically for just, I think it was 87, the small property. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we haven't seen anything on the, we haven't seen anything on the large property. And then that's when uh, Lisa had, had uh, talked about the, um, that application for change of use. Uh, the first time I kind of saw that application um, and we needed to determine, you know, where we stood on EDUs for both properties as well. So they seemed to think there was a credit of EDUs, but I'm, I'm not sure. What the, what the what the original edus were for the hotel and um and how they how they match up with you know 20 plus residential units plus retail and if there's any restaurants going in over there i don't know right you you guys haven't received a change in use permit application have you no i i i, I don't believe they have submitted it right 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 i mean maybe we should have uh, yeah. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, I believe that both <laughs> submitted a um, cut and cap application for okay. when okay. demolishing the buildings, and that's all we've received. Okay. So maybe we should maybe we should contact them for the change in use application. Maybe they don't know they're supposed to file that. You know, because it'd be the same as one pleasant. We need to review what's going on, and you know, how much additional flow is going into the system, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. That's... Well, I think they, I think they calculated that what was there with the restaurant, with with um, the number of rooms they had, sixty rooms or whatever, and calculated what the EDUs would would have been in those days. But I think this is long enough ago that I'm sure that EDUs didn't even come up. It was just yeah. a connection to the to the thing for that yeah. particular use. Yeah, I was wondering if the if if the applicants are the one telling us what the EDUs were versus what we had um, registered, what the EDUs were, you know, right. so I, I thought Lisa tried to look into that, but I'm, I'm not sure how old the data was, but certainly, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think in 87 was a two part to a two apartments and a, a, a retail, I think at the bottom. So I'm not sure if that was, that was a lot newer than the hotel, but um do you remember, Lisa, if you had any of that data? I believe that the files were pretty um, lean, but yeah. I'll take another look at. Okay. I mean, I, I can look it up based upon the previous sewer expansion project. Okay. What we assigned to that property for EDU. Yeah, um, yeah, you would have known. Yeah, plus the, the Little Harbor project, they were part of that, right? So, yeah. so I Central, can look up betterments. <laughs> I can look up betterments and see what they had for a betterment. Yeah, so you'd be looking at the central central expansion. Yeah. And not so much the, the fee, but basically the EDUs that were assigned to the property. Right. Yeah, so there's two properties we're concerned with, right? 87 and 123, I think, is the other one. 124. I think, I think so. Right. Now, there is a, a, a commercial component as the requirement of them building on, with a building on the waterfront. Um, but we don't know what what the, the stores or businesses will be, except right. that they're supposed to be water related and like a tackle shop or whatever, different things like that. Okay. Uh, because they've only ever talked about the, the residential aspect. But, right. it, they have, but they certainly have plans to do a, you know, some business, some businesses that, you know, right near the condominiums. <clears throat> yeah, the, the property was, I'm looking at the betterment sheet right now. And uh, it looks like back then it was determined to be the equivalent of 42 EDUs, the combined properties. Both oh, for both, both, both properties, 87 and 123? Yeah. That was from the developer from? That was based upon an estimate on the uses at that time for the assignment of betterments back in 2000 or so. 2010? 2000. Oh, 2000, okay. So back then it was listed as 42 EDUs. Okay. Okay, so that's quite a few. It is. Yeah. More than likely, they would be below that at this point. But right. We need, yeah. In a change of use application, you need to have that broken down. Yeah. Because they do have one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom units. So it'd be nice to 
I'm not sure if this would be the first time in history we'd have a drop in EDUs. <laughs> It would be one nice. or two times, but yeah, yeah. not often. Not often. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, is there anything else on the agenda, Carol? There is nothing else on the agenda. Okay. So um, I'm assuming you've been um, taking copious notes. Just um, you know. <laughs> I have. Okay, good. And then, um, so with that said, um, is there any any other uh, comments or issues? All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Paul Kearse, aye. Wait, so the, meeting, the meeting has been adjourned. Dan, thank you so much. Um,